All right, Shalom, first and foremost, all praise and glories unto Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Harachakodash, double honor to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone. Greetings, salutations, and blessings unto the men and women who have changed their lives for them and their families that they may earn their righteousness <coughs> from Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, in these last days of this evil empire and generation that we live amongst. Shalom unto you that are listening and learning. All right. I'm Brother Shaquat from the Las Vegas Church, and we're going to get into this, uh, another video on temptation. In particular, this one will be about women, okay? This isn't going to be a long, drawn-out um, video, you know, because, you know, the scriptures have their their moments for women. This is just one that uh, shows uh, men particularly how to be... Uh, aware if you will of the temptations of women okay and how things happen according all right so i'll start with the the temptation scriptures that i love in james the first chapter of 12 verses says blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which the lord yahweh have promised to them that love him let no man say when he is tempted i am tempted of the most high for the Most High cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away from his own lust and enticed. And when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Okay, that's the process of temptation. Okay, right there. You're enticed and drawn, because the temptation means to be enticed of your own lust. Lust of, lust of your flesh, the lust of your eyes, the pride of life. Okay? Those things, and this one particularly, is the lust of the flesh. Okay? You have a lust of the flesh uh, to where it becomes detrimental to you in this word, and, and you'll be tempted away from this thing. Okay? You can be drawn away. Okay? As, as the scripture says, verse 16, Do not err, my beloved brethren. Okay? Do not fall to these temptations. All right, so that's the first initial scripture I like to read on these lessons. And I'm going to go to, uh, where do we want to start? Let's start with, hmm, Sirach 9. I've jotted down a few scriptures. And uh, I'm going to go to Sirach 9. I believe this is it. Yep. Yeah. See here. Uh, bear with me. There's another one. All right, I'm going to get this one first, then I'll go back to that one. Let's go uh, Sirach 19, uh, verse 2. Okay, it says, Wine and women will make a man of understanding to fall away. And he that cleaveth to harlot shall become impudent. Okay, let's get the word impudent. Of impudent. Not showing due respect for another person. Impertinent. Okay. Disrespectful, man, to others. Okay. Uh, ashamed, modest is the uh, not ashamed or modest. Not humble. Okay. Brazen, cheeky. Shameless. Insubordinate. Irreverent. Okay. Forward. Uh, audacious, insolent, brash, rude, impolite, ill-mannered. Look at these words. Okay? These are the things that pull you away. And this is the things that are against the scriptures. Okay? Of what we should be. Tells us about being lowly, meek, humble. Okay? Godly. Alright, so let's go back. Of course, it wants to turn the script, the page. Alright, read it again. Sirach 19 and 2. Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. And he that cleaveth to harlots shall become impudent. And yeah, and women will, will easily be, 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 the, be the test of it, man. Matter of fact, here's one I didn't grab. I didn't jot down, but we're going to go to it. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Start up toward the top of it. Let's see if we can get to the point. Let's 
see. Uh, um, yeah, very good. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll start here. It says, um, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 8. It says, For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Okay? For this cause ought the Most High to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. Okay, that's the... That's the connection that the Heavenly Father has. So, yeah, we are going to seek after women. Okay, we're going to seek after women. You know, um, we saw how men sought after women in the ancient world, particularly starting back with Adam. And we also see how, um, let me start up right there, 13, um, how sin was, was brought upon by the woman. Okay, so we have to be cautious. And then we also know a King Solomon said um, in, the, in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, he said, one of a thousand men have I found that were righteous, but of a woman of a thousand have I not found. He said, whose heart, matter of fact, I, I got to get it. I'll go back to that. That's a perfect segue. And then, um, beautiful. It's like 25, 26. Yep, I'll read it all. Uh, Sirach, I mean, excuse me, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and 25. I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even the foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets is traps. Okay? The way she, her mind works is full of traps. Okay? All right, you got to understand that. That's why the scriptures tell you that uh, there's nothing more glorious than a mind well instructed. Okay? It says, uh, and her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth the Most High shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Okay? Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to, found, to find out the account, which yet my soul seeketh, because we do seek after women. And I'm going to get that when we go over to, um, back to the first, uh, Edris, the fourth chapter, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not one man of, among a thousand have I found, but a woman of all those have I not found. Okay. Okay. So you can't cast your whole lot upon the woman. And the scriptures remind you of those things. And that was just funny because these, the spirit just keeps moving circle uh, moving around uh in different uh areas so let me go back to to the book of what um of uh what was that um okay so now we're back in sirach the ninth chapter okay it says be not jealous over the wife of thy bosom and teach her not an evil lesson against thee because of those snares and nets their focus is for uh, their desire to be to us, but they want our desire to be to them. Okay, so you have to be aware that this woman is not going to give up her power. Because this is what her, and uh, speaking of her as Eve and the serpent, agreed upon. This is this is the, the culmination of that. Okay, coming to pass. As bad and as wicked as this, as this is, this is what they wanted. This is what Esau wanted, the serpent man, the, the devil, the wicked. Okay. This is what they wanted, and this is what the woman wanted. This is what Eve wanted. She wanted to be a part of that. Understanding that one of the biggest tests for men in the faith is dealing with a woman. Or 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 not dealing with a woman. Okay? So just just to put that out there. It says, Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. And what's the most uh um uh, vital precious substance that we have in this thing it's this truth knowledge and wisdom should be the stability of thy time uh and strength of salvation the fear of the lord is his treasure okay and then she that is my enemy will say where is the, the promise of the coming of the lord 
and she shall be trotted down at the mire in the streets. Okay, I mean, there's a bunch of scriptures talking about how she doesn't believe. Okay, so, so and it tells you even in uh, 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, um, to um, he that is married care for the things of his wife, how he may please his wife. But he that is unmarried, that remains unmarried, care for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Remember, the time is short. And I paraphrase that out of order, but that was the sentiment of those verses in that First Corinthians, the seventeenth, uh, the seventh chapter. Okay, back in this it says, "Meet not much with an harlot, lest thou fall into her snares." Okay, these are temptations. Okay, now it does tell you uh, to be, be, be that you can marry, and we know what marriage is according to the scriptures. You know, it's not necessarily jumping the broom. It's when you join flesh with a, with a, with a, with a woman and, and truly join flesh with a woman is a woman that's not betrothed or married to another man. Okay? That's when you become married. Okay? So that you may marry, that you don't burn, you know, with lust or whatever for your uh, incontinency. Okay? It says, verse 4, Use not much the company of a woman that is a singer, lest thou be taken with her attempts. She will, like the siren character that you hear in some of this folklore out there, she will, will, will sing you right into submission, okay? It says, gaze not on the maid, lest thou fall not, excuse me, lest thou fall not by those things which are precious in her. Give not thy soul unto harlots, that thou lose not thine inheritance, okay? And it continues to go, go on, verse 8. Uh, turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman and look not upon another's beauty, another person's, another woman's beauty that belongs to another man. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman, for herewith love is kindled as a fire. Sit not with another man's wife, nor sit down with her in thine arms, and spend not thy money with her at the wine. Okay, which breaks down your psyche. Okay, your, 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 um, your integrity can become compromised when you when you you know overdone it with the wine or with, with a strong drink it says uh lest thine heart incline unto her and so through thy desire thou fall into destruction okay and and it continues going on so from there uh something just popped uh, in my head before i get back to first corinthians i mean first address the fourth chapter which is all right real quick uh this is one real quick Ecclesiasticus, the book of Sirach, in the Apocrypha, chapter 25, verse 21, stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. That's how you put yourself in position to be uh, tempted, okay? Because those are the things that are going to lead you to the flesh, all right? Uh, but the one I was thinking was in Proverbs. Proverbs, the ninth chapter. Top around 13th verse. Now this uh, is particularly talking about uh, false philosophies. Okay, this woman here, a foolish woman, is also talking about uh, philosophies. But this can be applied to, to, to women of the flesh as well. It says, a foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city. To call passengers who go right on their way. To tempt them away. Okay, from going right on, on their ways, right? Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. Hear the temptation? <clears throat> and as for him that wanted understanding, she said to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Okay, it was a bold-faced lie. A similar lie to, to what the devil told, I mean, what the serpent told Eve. You will not surely die. Okay? But that's going to lead you to sin. And sin, when it, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Now, to give the proper understanding, this is another philosophy. Okay? This is a philosophy, a, a, a foolish philosophy right here. Okay? Which go you want to do the things you know it's, it's like an analogy of it just a segue then I'll get back uh just a segue it's like going it's like going into um 
flat earth. And then that flat earth, you know, even though you read the Bible, you go into a couple things with the flat earth. Now you stop believing that, that the Bible is the, the most important thing that you're learning about. And now you're off into another philosophy that you didn't dipped into. And now that didn't pulled you out the faith. Okay. So I digress. <clears throat> you know, oh, another one in the book of Proverbs, the 30th chapter that goes directly in line with that is this one. It says, such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and said, I have done no wickedness. Okay, that's physically, and that's what happens when you bring that temptation upon yourself. Okay, you, it, it wasn't me that did it, it was you. I've done no wickedness. But but the truth of the matter is, you did uh, commit that act with that woman. You did commit that act of that philosophy. Okay, but this is more so about the physical temptations of women. You know, there's, there's younger men in the faith. That, that that may still be struggling with this or men that's coming in that don't know how to separate themselves from the most uh, uh, from the mo in, in themselves and their faith in the most high from the things of the world alright and I quoted a couple of them but let, now let's get back to 1st Hedris 1st Hedris 4 I'll start up at 13 it says then the third who spake of women and of the truth this was the rubble bell began to speak um let's get to the point um yep yep verse 18 it said yea and if men have gathered together gold and silver or any other goodly thing do they not love a woman which is comely in favor and beauty and letting all those things go do they not gape and even with open mouth fix their eyes fast on her? And have not all men more desire unto her than unto silver or gold or any goodly thing whatsoever? A man leaveth his father that brought him up and his country and cleaveth to his wife. And he sticketh not to spend his life with his wife. And he sticketh not to spend his life with his wife and remember and remember neither father nor mother nor country. By this you must also know that women have dominion over you. Do you not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman? Okay. And this is going to particularly show you how men can go into a dangerous situation all because of, of women. And many, there's many a nigga in jail right now because of women. Okay. Many a men are in jail thinking they're doing the right thing, but they were tempted away. Okay, that's not for us, man. What's for us is to keep things in its proper perspective and knowing that there's nothing more greater than this wisdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, Sophia. That that's our first love, that that's our woman. Okay, when we give time to our physical women or whatever, we have to also give time to our main woman, which is this wisdom, which will never do us wrong or, 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 or you know, and cheat us. Okay, that's another video for another day. Also, this is just more more of a warning. Say, yea, twenty three. Yea, a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and steal, tempted away from doing the right things. The Lord said, Thou shalt not steal. Right. So now you're sinning to rob and steal, to sell upon seas and upon rivers. Which any time you were to, in the, especially in the ancient world, you were just any time at all really, you go out into the ocean like that, or a sea, or a river. The chances of death was greatly increased. Okay? So you went out there and risked your life going on them boats. Alright? It says, um, Wherefore a man love his wife better than father or mother. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sake. I gotta look this word up. Wit definition. Okay? Now it says, uh, or wits, it says, mental sharpness and inventiveness, keen intelligence. Okay, intelligence, shrewdness, astuteness, cleverness. Okay, acumen, discernment, discernment. 
Okay, men have gone out of their discernment, out of their brains, minds. Okay, many, many men have gone out of their good sense, have gone out of proper judgment. Okay, I'm just using some of the, the, the synonyms here. All right, let's go back. So you can put any of those words into this. All right, back at 26. I read it again. It says, Yea, many there be that have run out of their minds, out of their wits, out of their good sense, out of their judgment, out of their discernment, okay? Run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sakes. So you are moved from being he that care for this world, care, uh, care for the, um, his wife. Matter of fact, I'm going to just get it because that's a good time to bring that one. And I mean, I quoted it, but it's always a good time to just read them, okay? Seven, I believe that's 29. Something like that. Yep. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. I, but, I, but this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that they that have wives be as though they had none. Okay? And he that... Let me jump down to... Uh, yeah. To 32. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried care for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married care for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Okay? There's a... It goes into that. Okay. Unmarried woman. Well, I might as well read it. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy, both in body and in spirit, but she that is married cared for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Because that's where her duty is to, okay? It tells you if you have somebody, don't seek to be away from them. If you have somebody, if you don't have anybody, don't seek to be with somebody. There's there's your your your, your path right there. And then the Lord will put in before your path. He'll remove that evil man that's in front of you or or, or turn that man to a good man or or... Or, you know, and so on and so forth accordingly. All right, so let's go back to First Hedges 4. 26 is where I was at. And this is a, one of the coldest examples, one of my favorites um, within the scriptures on the topic of women. Uh, verse 27, I'll start up at. It says, Many also have perished, been killed, and sin, when it, when it is finished, bringeth forth death, and have erred and have sinned for women. Okay? And now do you not believe me? Is not the king great in his power? Do not all regions fear to touch him? Yet did I see him and Apame, the king's concubine, a woman, the daughter of the admirable Barticus, sitting at the right hand of the king and taking the crown from the king's head, which in ancient customs, the moment you touch the crown, if anybody but royalty touched the crown, it was off with their head. Okay? taking the crown from the king's head and setting it upon her own head. And when he went to reach back for it, right? This is what I, I you put the scene together. She also struck him with her left hand. She was sitting at the right hand of the king, took his crown off, which that is a position of power, the right hand of the king, okay? And uh, she took the, the crown off his head. He's like, hey, you know, you can see it. Hey, good plan. He reached for her back and she struck him with her left hand, backhanding. With disrespect, with her left hand. Okay, yet, and yet for all this, the king gaped and gazed upon her with open mouth. If she laughed upon him, he laughed also. <laughs> she laughed, laughed in the scorn. And he laughed, <laughs> laughed, laughed it off. But if she took displeasure at him, oh, I don't want to deal with you. I ain't gonna give you no 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 good love in the night or whatever. You know? But if she took displeasure at him, the king was fain to flatter. Now he'd become a servant for her. That she might be reconciled to him again. Oh baby, please. That's simple beta male mentality, man. Okay? Oh ye men, how can it be? But women should be strong, seeing they do thus. Okay? And so you have to understand. And matter of fact, in this, before I close it, um, 
I have to be sure to grab this scripture. Matter of fact, we're going to go there now. Let me see what else I jotted down. That was the point of that. So let's go and show you a, a situation of temptation with a woman, particularly in Genesis with uh, Joseph. All right. <clears throat> let me get to the point. Yeah, so let me start up at, uh, at verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. This is Genesis 39 2. And the Lord Yahweh was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer of his house. And all that he had, he put his hand unto. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and over all that he had, that the Lord Yahweh blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. <clears throat> and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife, uh oh, temptation of a woman right here, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. Basically, come on, Joseph, commit adultery with me. But he refused. Okay. My brethren, do not err. Okay? And said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master watcheth not what is with me in, in this house, and he hath committed all that he had to my hand. There is none greater in his house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee. He gave me power to do whatever so I will with everything in his house, but his wife, because thou art his wife, how can, can, excuse me, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against the Most High, Yahweh? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, she kept trying to get him, trying to weaken him day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there within and she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Okay, so that's the same thing as stolen water are sweet. Okay, it's, you know. Men that go right upon their ways turn in hither. Okay. All right, you see it? You see how that how that how that can easily be a situation? You go out with, with, with the fellas or whatever. You know, you go out to the bar, have a drink, and you and a brother or whatever, and all of a sudden women come upon you and you know she's not wearing a ring, not realizing that she had that tan line and that she was married. And she gonna talk, especially here in Las Vegas. You know, they, they still try to, 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 to have that Sin City image of and that slogan, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. No, the most I see these things. Okay? The most I see these things. All right? So the, you, you won't escape. Okay? So I'll read that part again. And she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. And he, and he left his garment in her hand. And fled and got him out. So he let he was took off naked. Okay, and it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, "See, he has brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us." He look, see how she twisted the story and lied, and he came in unto me to lie with me and I cried with a loud voice and it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried 
that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. Okay, and she said, excuse me, and she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. See how she was real deceptive, snares and nets? Okay. So when you deal with, wisdom, with women, you have to deal with wisdom. Okay. And be, be sure not to put yourself in a situation that can be, become detrimental to, 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 the, to you in the faith. And believe me, I've had, i got testimonies on it. Okay. Far too many. Believe me. So, you know, I just want to um, put that out there that this is another great temptation is dealing with women. Okay? Women in the faith will, will cause men to, to, to fall away. Matter of fact, did, did, I, did I get that one? Yeah, I did. I did read that one in, in Sirach 19. Okay? So, like I said, this was just... Uh, a warning showing you the different another level of temptation you know that that these situations i, I to, to to give a quick testimony i've been in a situation where a woman was like i thought this was just a fad thing and i you know when are you going to grow up past it hit me on all the levels and i was like hey this is my life if you want to be in my life then this needs to be a part of your life and i'm not, that was pretty much the end between her and i and there were always attempts to all oh, come back into her life, and the Lord didn't want that to happen. Okay, and it made it clear unto me that I was not supposed to deal with that woman anymore. All right, call all you like y'all about me all shy. So anyway, Lord willing, this was edifying, and I'd like to give all praise and glories unto Yahweh by Shimi Yahweh Shai, by Shimi Harachakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of the Great Millstone. Greetings, salutations, and blessings on to the hopeful elect. Until the next one, Shalom.